tonight. Uh, before I get started, it is Thanksgiving week, uh, and uh, I'm going to share something with you here in just a minute. God showed me uh, specifically just this week. I've never preached on it, and I've definitely never done it for the Thanksgiving holidays, uh, but I've just been begging God uh, over just a thought for the night, and I'm going to try to share that with you. But real quick tonight, you got anything you want to praise the Lord for for this Thanksgiving holiday? Anything at all? Brother Jason. Amen. 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 We were talking about that anxiety on Sunday. Brother Jason uh, shared with me what he went through uh, with that. By the way, it's, it's, uh, there's been some other folks this week shared some things too uh, that they went through to try to be it was a big help to them. I praise the Lord for that. Anybody else tonight? Just real quick, Brother Brandon. Amen. Amen. Thank the Lord. Four years. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Keep up with that birthday. Don't ever forget that one. Amen. I may forget my first one. Amen. But I don't want to forget my second one. Thank the Lord. Brother Gene. Amen. 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 Thank the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Brother Gene. Somebody else tonight? Miss T? Amen. Praise the Lord. God is so good. Go ahead, Brother Kidman. Amen. 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 Thank you, Brother Kidman. We sure want to encourage them along the way. And God's been good to them since they've been out there. And got home yesterday. I just texted them and said, welcome home. Amen. That's what it feels like to us. So praise the Lord. Anybody else? Miss Renee. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Wow. Amen. 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 Thank God. Amen. Anybody else tonight? Amen. Thank you, Miss Ann. Amen. Thank you, Miss Ann. I appreciate that. I thank God you're here, Miss Ann. Thank the Lord. Amen. Anybody else tonight? Well, when all hearts clear, go ahead, Brother Joy. Amen. Amen. Brother Will. Thank you, Brother Will. Ms. Carolyn. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Amen. Amen. It's good to thank him on credit, ain't it? Anybody else tonight? Amen. Thank the Lord. Anybody else? Michael. Amen. God's still been good through it all. Amen. Sometimes we wonder what we're going to do the next day, but God's sure still been good through it all. I told somebody today, I was talking to the pastor today, and he said, man, I don't know. I said, listen, God's been good. We don't have no choice but keep going. Amen. Anybody else tonight? Miss Lynn. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Miss Lynn. I thank you for helping take care of my mom and being there for her and getting her to church. That's been a great blessing for us. We we praise the Lord for her. We're gonna we're gonna hang on to her, amen, and <laughs> keep her around. Thank the Lord. Anybody else tonight? I was uh, <coughs> at a funeral today, and uh, Miss Davis, Miss Faye Davis, died. Chester Davis's mom. And um, the pastor, Brother Richard, said this right here. Uh, and you would have had to have known Miss Davis. And uh, most of our folks in the community knew her. Uh, she was a pastor's wife uh, and a good pastor's wife. She was a great Christian. She loved God, uh, served God. I mean, wholeheartedly served God. And uh, he said this today, and it stuck with me. And I went back and jotted down in my notes this afternoon. He said, I'm not worried about what I say about her today. I'm just worried about how I'm going to say all that should be said. Amen? And, uh, boy, that was a testimony to her life, uh, that there was so much that needed to be said uh, that you did not have the time uh, to get it in. And, boy, if I could say anything tonight about the goodness of God, there's not enough time. Uh, in this night we'd be here uh, most of you wouldn't get to go to work tomorrow amen uh, if all of us began to thank God of his goodness and what he has done and how great he's been that we would none of us would be worried about what to say or what we could say uh, because if you're breathing tonight and uh, you're sitting in here tonight you surely have something to praise God for uh, it would just be a matter of being able to say all I should say, amen, and taking the time and not wanting to forget anything, amen, because uh, who would want to go through all that and say, man, I forgot to say this about uh, the Lord, then I'd have to start all over again, and I'd have to work through it again. I'm sure I'd repeat myself several times, uh, but it was just a good thought that God put on my heart when I was listening to him uh, today. He said a lot of other great things about her, but don't you turn your Bibles tonight, the book of Matthew chapter number 6. Matthew chapter number 6, uh, I want to read a few verses here, and I want to share a thought with you tonight that God gave me, 
uh, this week while I was just reading and I was praying. And I said, God, just give me a thought that I can share with the church on Wednesday night uh, for Thanksgiving that would be a help to them. And uh, I pray, I know it's helped me today uh, and yesterday, just in my time of studying, uh, it's helped me tremendously. But Matthew chapter number 6 and verse number 25, and li listen, th this is not a follow-up from Sunday because uh, there's so much more uh, I could say about the message on Sunday. I got through one point of it on Sunday, and I'll try to come back and preach the rest of that because I, I cannot tell you uh, how many responses we've had because of that uh, this week. But here in Matthew chapter number 6, verse number 25, we find also here a cure for anxiety. I'm not uh, talking about that tonight, but that is to trust in the Father's care, to trust in the Father's care. And so I want to read starting verse number 25, and then I'm going to give you a thought that I'm going to uh, share with you. The Bible says, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather in the barn. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, Shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. I want you to pay, pay close attention here to verse number 33. It's where I'm going to take my text from tonight. He said, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. I want you to underline that word there, things. That word things, if you believe in marking in your Bible. All these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself, Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. God gave me this thought yesterday, and I was reading and studying and looking at this right here, and here's what I want to just share with you tonight. What things are you talking about? What things are you talking about? He said here that if you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these things shall be added unto you. As I begin to look at this scripture right here and begin to read God's word and just study what he's talking about and, and being a Christian, it would be a testimony to the world when every Christian practices verse 33. But let me share this with you. It's going to be a tragedy to the world when we don't. It's going to be a testi testimony to the world when we do, but it is going to be a tragedy when we don't. As I began to think about this and the things God was going to talk about adding to our life right here, and I titled this, What Things Are You Talking About? It brought my mind to an old song back in the hymn book uh, that we used to sing. I've not sang it in years, and some of you will remember this. What sins are you talking about? And before I get to the things that he added to our life, there's two things I want to thank God for tonight. I do want to thank him for the things that he's added to my life, and we're going to talk about those things, but... I surely want to thank him for the things he took out of my life. 
God took some things out of my life. And can I say to you tonight, if, if we ever, if I said, I said a while ago, when, when, as a testimony to the world, it will be when you and I begin to practice verse number 33, seek ye first. But can I tell you this? We will never practice seek ye first until God takes some things out of our life. God's going to have to remove some things from our life in order for us to practice seeking God and be in that testimony. I thought about that old song today, and I asked Michael if he would bring it up tonight and play it for me uh, just for, he's going to play it real quick. It's only a couple of minutes, but I want you to listen to this song tonight, What Sins Are You Talking About, before I get into the rest of it, because I just want to thank him for what he took out of my life first. And then we're going to talk about these things tonight. Play that for When I was bent low With a burden of sin and strife Then Jesus came in And he rescued me And he gave me a brand new life And now as I thank him day after day For washing my sin away It seems I can almost hear The voice of my blessed Savior becomes weak it's then I can speak to the master who's with me each day oh father forgive me hear my plea then he washes my sin away each time that I bow to give thanks to him for removing my guilt and my shame I sat in my office today, and I pulled that song up, and I began to let that thing play for a while. And I'll be honest with you, I got so overwhelmed by the things that he's taken out of my life, I never had to think about the things he's put in my life. Amen. Now, I thank God for the things he's put there in my life. I really do. But I was more excited about the things he's taken out of my life. I was more excited about the things he's already forgiven me for before I go in the further uh, in life. Listen, I just wanted to rejoice today, and I did uh, by myself. I was at home there by myself for a good while, just rejoicing in the Lord, having a good time uh, in the Lord. And I said, God, listen, if I don't ever thank you for anything you added to my life, I just want to thank you for what you took out of my life. Amen. I'm just happy about that tonight. <laughs> Amen. Listen, I'm going to heaven tonight because of what he took out of my life. Amen. Not because of what he put in my life. I'm going because of what it took out of my life. Amen. When I got saved, born again, washed in the blood of the Lamb, completely forgiven. Amen. He took all of those things away and took them out of my life. That's enough to rejoice about uh, right there. Amen. But listen, what sins are you talking about? What is that that's been torn out of our life? I'll tell you what it's been. Sin, sorrow, heartache, despair, being down. Listen, whatever it is in our life, God, a holy God has taken that out that you and I don't have to give an account for it uh, down the road. Listen, we ought to rejoice in the very fact, amen, that God's taken something out of our life. 
as we put on the sign this week, I sent Anthony, bought him a list over here and told him what to, uh, showed him what to put on the sign. And, and one side of it says, we don't need more things to be thankful for. We just need to be more thankful. Brother Anthony put that on the sign. And he texted me a picture back after he got on that. And he said, that speaks a lot right there. Amen. Uh, that speaks a lot right there. But I began to think about this uh, yesterday and today, and I was looking at some things uh, uh, in the Word of God when he said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Can I tell you this tonight? When God gives us things, he gives us good things. Well, the Bible says every good and perfect gift comes from above. Amen. He took out all the bad things. Amen. He washed all the sin away. But the Bible is clear that he gives us good things. And from what I can find in the Word of God uh, and much study, that most things that I know of are not wrong things in our life. They're not wrong things in our life. Listen, God, listen, he made things uh, for us. I find that when the Lord's uh, teaching right here uh, and the Lord is speaking right here, he is not speaking prohibitively or trying to prevent us from having things. Amen. What he is trying to prevent here is where they take place in our life. Amen. He is not trying, I, I, from the looks of this, he said, all these things will be added unto you. What things are you talking about? Listen, he's trying to add some things, amen. So he's not against adding some things. He's not against us having some things. He's not against us, listen, uh, just him putting things in our life. It's just where they occupy a place in our life. And sad to say, we've raised a generation where there's a lot of things that's occupying the place of God. It is not that God is trying to prevent us from having anything in life. We find in the preceding verses here before verse number 63, he's talking about food and raiment uh, and clothing, and surely God wants us to have food and raiment to live. And surely he wants us to have clothing uh, to be clothed with and wrapped up. He teaches us about modesty uh, in the Word of God. So he clearly teaches us hey, that we're not to seek those things in life, uh, but we're to seek the things of God and the righteousness of God uh, so that God would have. Listen, one writer put it this way. He said what this literally means right here, and so when he talks about seeking the rights of God, it says seek the control of God over your life and seek the character of God in your life. Let me say that again. He said if we're going to do this, then we ought to seek the control of God over our life and seek for the character of God in our life. He says when we're to seek him, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then we want to seek after God and go after God and literally say this, God, I am seeking you to be in full control of my life. God wants to add some things to our life. Amen. And by the way, God does want to be in control of your life. Amen. And they can say what they want to about a lordship salvation. He's master, so it's okay if he has a lordship salvation in my life. I just had a man to mention that to me the other day, and I've not heard that in months. But somebody mentioned to me the other day, and I said, Hallelujah, glory to God, I'm glad. He's still master, amen. Uh, that means, listen, he's Lord over my life. Uh, I'm okay with it. Listen, we're to be seeking God's control uh, over our life and then God's characteristics in our life to have the very character of God. In other words, we ought to be begging God for his character in our life. God said these things will be added unto you, amen. We ought, we ought to desire God to add that in our life. We ought to desire God uh, to control our life. Why? I don't do a good job of it. Amen. I, I don't do a good job of uh, controlling my life. I, I was talking to a pastor uh, just uh, uh, last night. We were over at the wake over there, uh, Chester's mom, and I was talking to a, a pastor over there, and we were talking about different uh, things in life. We got the kidding about, you know, loving God and, and trying to do right by God. And he starts sharing some things with me, and I start sharing some things with me. And I, and I said, Brother, I don't have it all together. Uh, amen. <laughs> I don't have it all together. I'm still begging God for good character. Amen. 
that I, I'm still begging God uh, for control, amen? Why? To control me. I know who I am, amen? I know what I can be uh, in life. I got to think about these things God's going to add, and I'm like, God, hey, if you don't mind, just add a little more control over me. It'd be okay. God, if you don't mind, I'd have a little more of that character uh, in me because I could use some of that uh, in my life from day to day a lot of times. I don't mind you spreading a little bit of that uh, on me because I could surely use it. There's no question. By the way, you could too. Amen. There's a few people that they may think they have it all together, but they don't. They've not. They've not arrived there yet. One writer put it this way about seeking Him first. To put it, he said to put it another way. He said, "Seek the rule of God over your life and the righteousness of God in your life." See, we're not going to have the character of God until we seek the righteousness of God. Amen. We will never have any type of character of God until say we until we say we want to be righteous. Until we beg God to pour in us the righteousness of God. God, I don't want to be myself anymore. I don't want Mike's character to uh, come out anymore. People know me for who I am and, and what I am. I want a totally different character. And so go ahead and take rule over that uh, in my life and put righteousness in my life. And then Jesus promises here that all these things, what is he promising? All that food and clothing and everything else that we need. He said, I will supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory. He said, if you seek me first, if you seek my righteousness, if you seek my control, if you seek my uh, character, if you seek my rule, if you seek my, my righteousness, I will add these things in your life. And God desires to add all of these things. What things are you talking about? I'll tell you what he'll add. He'll add character. He'll add conduct. He'll add righteousness in our life. He'll add rule in our life. He'll meet things we never dreamed of in our life. Things are not wrong. So many times we think that they are. So many times it's just where they occupy a place at in our life. One writer told the story. He and I heard this uh, many years ago, and he talked about wrong priorities and, and uh, things like that. He said, a diamond ring on a lady's finger is a beautiful thing but the hope to behold, is it not? He said, but put that same diamond ring in her high heel step shoe and let her walk a few steps, and the very thing that brought pleasure on the finger brings pain in the shoe. Amen? It's still the diamond ring. It's still worth the same amount. It's just where it's being occupied. Amen? It may be a beautiful thing on your finger, but I don't know of one woman in here that wants to walk around with it on the heel of her foot in her shoe. Amen. It don't fit there, right? Even though it's still a diamond here, it's still the same. Listen, it's still the same thing. The only difference is the place that it is occupying in our life. As long as people, people continue to get their priorities wrong, listen, we're going to occupy things wrong in our life. But Jesus said, I'm going to add these things to your life. I want you to enjoy them. Let me just give you a couple of things tonight, uh, if I can. And I don't mean to make nobody mad. I mean, it's Thanksgiving. I want to try to help you tonight. I, I like enjoying a good baseball game. I really do. I like baseball. It's kind of the only sport uh, that I was ever any good at, and I wasn't much good at that. I mean, I like NASCAR. I'm a redneck racetrack trash fan. That's all I've ever been. I ain't no more than that now. I, I love uh, race cars. I love seeing one slap the other against the wall every now and then, amen, and uh, take them out and those kind of uh, those kind of things. I, I, I like all of that stuff. Is there anything wrong with that? No. It's just that I don't like to do it on Jesus' time. I don't like to do it on God's time. I don't like to take away from God's time to do it. God never said it was wrong. God said, I'm going to add some things to your life. I made things for you to enjoy. Amen. Listen, if we look around, there's so many things I hear that God made for us. And I enjoy nature. I, I love nature. Amen. But God did not intend for us to enjoy it on his time. Amen. And too many times, it's, there again, it's nothing wrong with it. It's just the place that it occupies in our life. We have to be very careful, Christian when it comes to putting things in the place of God. And can I tell you, we have raised a generation that does not mind doing that at all. 
Amen. And, and let me let me just be let me be transparent with our church tonight. Uh, you're you're most y'all are are members here at the church. I, I'm not against a person taking a weekend off and and taking a vacation and going to a race or going to a ball. I'm not I'm not against that. I want y'all to know that. Uh, I have come to now years ago. I, I'd have stomped my feet, spit all over you, slobbered up and down the up and down the highway, said you ought to be in God's house every time the door is up. You're going to die and go to hell if you don't. You ought to get right with God. I remember those days, but why? Because I heard that all my life when I, since I've been a Christian. Amen. But I do realize sometimes that's the only time people can get away for a vacation. Amen. They work all week long. I have found out, I've come to the realization, it took me about 18 years, preacher, uh, to figure this out, uh, that I can go somewhere on Monday and Tuesday if I need to. Amen. I ain't, I ain't bound to something like people are at work. So I'm not against somebody going out on the weekend, taking a vacation to their family, enjoying something like that. I believe God would have it too. I'm just against it when we do it over and over and over again, and that becomes our life instead of the things of God. By the way, once we start pouring too much money into that, we don't, we're not paying tithes, not giving God what's right. Shame on you, amen. It begins to occupy a greater place in our heart. God says, I want to add some things to your life. I want you and your family to enjoy life. I want you and your family to enjoy things together. I want you to be able to take a vacation. I understand you work all week long and sometimes you need a day. I understand all of that, but God says there's some things that I want you to enjoy in life. I told somebody recently, and sometimes people get a little upset with me over things like this, and uh, I pray that y'all won't do that tonight, And uh, but I told somebody recently, you know, and they're, they're all right up in sports and of course if you talk to them they're the greatest christians in the world and and this that and other you can hardly ever get them at church and do come to church they come in late and and this that and other i just want to ask you something your kid's a pretty good ball player right yeah i said would you allow your kid to show up 15 minutes late for 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 a ball game every week no i said that's, that's just what i thought why don't you stop showing up 15 minutes late for church with them every week Ooh, remember, God's not against the ball game. He's against where it occupies the place in our heart and our life. God wants to add some things to our life to help us in life, but we must seek him first and his righteousness first, his character, his conduct, his life, his rule, so that God can add some things to life. You know the problem most of us, we got so much of that in our life, there is no room for God to add anything. There is no room for God to We don't have time for God to add anything else to our life. We're so busy with things of the world. We get wrapped up in that. What things are you talking about? All of these things, he said, I would love to add some things to your life for you to be able to enjoy it. Why? Because God made every, everything that every good and perfect gift comes from above. He made for you and I to enjoy it. It's not that God says, I, I want to prevent you from enjoying anything in life. I, I, I do not want to prevent that. I just want to make sure that I've got first place in your life over that stuff. And we have literally raised that generation this day and time that will not give God first place in the life. Now, I do realize there's some Christians that think uh, we're not supposed to enjoy anything. Amen. Uh, there's some out there. there, there there's, a, there's a legalistic crowd out there that you know, says that it, it, and if it ain't, you know, just yada, 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 yada you're, you're never supposed to enjoy it. Amen. Listen, there's some things in life I enjoy. Amen. Uh, I like going to a race, going to a race every now and then. Every, every race we ever try to go to, I try to go to a go to a Saturday night race. And if it's late, I try to take Michael and Blake with me so they can drive back home. And I can preach the next day, Amen, and get back to the house and uh, let them sleep through church, Amen, uh, while I preach. But I, but I, but I, but I like that. I, I like that. And God, listen, God, God will give us those things to enjoy. We can still go and be what we're supposed to be in God. Amen, and be a testimony to the world. God, listen, talking about adding things to our life, God would like to add a testimony to us. He would like to add a testimony. I, I, I believe uh, Dr. John R. Rice said this right here. He said, a long face is a poor sign, uh, signboard for Jesus. Let me say that again. <laughs> a long face is a poor signboard for Jesus. 
those that just think, well, you can never have any fun. There, there's, some, <laughs> there's some preachers and, and missionaries come to our house every now and then, uh, and they come and stay with us, and you all know that. Uh, when missionaries come to town, pastors come to town, uh, a lot of times we put them up at our house. We've been doing that for many, many, many years. Amen. Uh, and they, they hang out. They hang out with all of this group. And, and when they hang out with this group, listen, everything has got to be just right. They've got to dress right, talk right. The hair's got to be cut exactly right. You know, all of these things. Everything about them has got to be molded in that pattern. And they know that. Well, they can come to our house, our house and finally let the hair down. Amen. Because uh, Jane and I look crazy around that sometimes. Amen. And uh, we, can, we can have a lot of humor going on, have them laughing a lot of times and, and doing some things. And you know what they do? They open up and they, they begin to laugh. And, 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 and as soon as they go back into that crowd, they have to mold themselves back up to that. And like, listen, I've been around that before. I've been in churches and I've been to pastor's conference before, before where you couldn't clap your hands when they were singing. Oh, I've been there. Uh, I, I, I was the only one that started clapping. <laughs> I'm like, uh-oh. And I'm talking about a church full of pastors. I'm talking about a real big church. Uh, and I'm and some pastor done invited me. He should, he should have never done that. You know, he didn't have no sense inviting me or something like that anyway. Uh, so I'm up in there, and they, break, they got done singing. I'm, he said, they don't, they don't do that here. He said, the moderator don't believe in that. I said, they ought to change moderators. <laughs> Let me moderate. Get some joy going on in here. Amen. Preacher, get up there and tell, tell a real good story and, and be carrying on and think, things like that. You can't clap for them. They said, that puts, puts too much emphasis on man. You know, I ain't, I'm just emphasizing the word of God he done spoke. Amen. But hey, listen, there, there are some out there that believe that we can't enjoy it. Listen, God said, I want to add some things to your life. I believe God would have us to be joyful Christians. I believe you'd have us to be happy Christians. Amen. I believe you'd have us to be alive and not be dead all the time. There's some things that God would like to add in the churches today, and, and if nothing else, it would be some life. I got a text just last night about last Wednesday night's message, <laughs> finishing up on Calvinism. Uh, it, it is from nobody in this county. Matter of fact, they live 10 counties down the road from us. And I got a text last, last night, and he said, Brother, I just wanted to text you. You got a hold of my number and, and, and tell you thank you, thank you, thank you for putting that out there. Amen. And he was so excited. He, you know why? They've been dealing with those kind of things. And, and he said, I, I just got to tell you, thank you. It, it helped him. Amen. We need some help in life. We need some joy back in our churches. God, listen, God wants to add that uh, to our lives. God wants to add that uh, to the churches. God would definitely like to put a little spunk uh, back in our churches this day and time. He would, have us, he would have us to have some joy in the church. He said, I want to add some things to you. If you'll seek me first, he said, I'll add some things to your life. There's some things I'll add to the church. I believe as a church, if we'll seek God first, God will add some things. Amen? But we've got to seek God first. Let me say that again. We've got to seek God first. Amen? It's not that God's against or trying to prevent the things that you enjoy. Don't let them occupy God's time. Don't let them occupy God's place. Amen? And too many times they're occupying God's place and they're occupying God's time. One writer put it this way, and some of you like this, especially for the Thanksgiving holidays. He said, use the good china. <laughs> Amen? Use the good china. Don't let it sit in the cabinet and then 40 and 50 years now pass it on to your children who will pass it on to your grandchildren and nobody ever gets to enjoy it. Enjoy the good china for the holiday. Jane, I just say she's picky. <laughs> I stopped that the other day too because I caught somebody else doing it. Jane and I, if we're going to a restaurant to eat and they have styrofoam cups, Jane takes her own glass cup her own coffee cup amen and i just laugh at it sometime she'll clean that thing out put it in her pocketbook and she said you want one i said no <laughs> just give me the cup who cares i'll drink out of whatever it don't matter we was at the restaurant the other day and the lady right at the table right next to us i have to look over to guess what she had she had her glass cup i said i ain't gonna say nothing else to mama after this amen you know what he's saying? We need to learn to enjoy 
some things like some of you women been sitting around. I know my mom name was this way and this that and the other. And my mom was my mom was real peculiar coming up over the house and 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 the, and the little details that my mom is sitting here tonight. She's still that detail. She I don't have, she's probably got a thousand little. We call them mom them little doodads sitting around the house everywhere. Amen. If I had to go in there and clean my mama's house, I'd take a blower, a backpack blower now. That's how I dust all of it. I would move all of them things for nothing in this world. Amen. If they get dusted. Amen. Miss Lynn, I'll help you out. Mama, mama wants all of them dusted. Every one of them. She's always been that way. She's always been clean. She's always been neat. Mama wants it. And I was thinking about it. We were sitting out the other day. Mama was talking about all the little things there now. I said, I'd come in here with a back floor. I'd open the front door and I'd blow all the dust out the door. Amen. Learn to enjoy some things in life. Amen. Mama, said, Mama says she enjoys looking at them clean. Amen. But listen, we need to learn to enjoy the things that God has given us in life. I like what one of them said, said, said this right here. He's talking about the silverware. He said either use it or sell it and get the money for something else. Use it for something else. Amen. You got the silver laying around, you ain't willing to use it, sell it and buy something you like with it. Amen. One of them got to talking about, I was reading this the other day, and it was talking about, uh, the box spring mattress. He said you spend million, nearly one-third of your life in bed. Listen to this. That's about 24 years of your life. Now, I understand we got a generation now that spends 52 years of their life in bed. Amen. But on an average, we spend 24 years of our life laying in bed. He said you ought to at least lay in a good one. What a waste of time. Hey, Amen. How many of y'all know we sleep on box springs and mattresses completely wore out and, and we would, listen, we ain't going to change them this, that, and that, but we wake up with a backache every morning. Did that for years. Jane said, why don't we just, I'm like, no, we don't need a new one. Your back hurts every day. Ain't got nothing to do with that. Amen. She said, learn to enjoy it. Amen. And, and, of course, recently, Recently, Jane and I have gotten a little bit smarter since she's about to turn 60, and I'm about to turn 62. Amen. And I'm going to be, kind of be like C.T. Studd right here, the great missionary. And I said, when I leave, my, leave here, I'm going to let my last check bounce. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I'm going to leave them with some stuff here when we leave. But listen, God made things for us to enjoy. He said, I'll add some things in your life. Now, I think we ought to put things in order. Amen. I think we ought to put things in order. How many of y'all were here when Mark was here doing the financial seminar on Wednesday nights? Do y'all remember how many items he said that's in the average person's home? Does anybody remember that number? Somebody give me a figure. I'm talking, just, just real quick, real quick. Don't sit there and add them all up. We ain't got all night to do that. But real quick in your home. If you said, if you think about every item in your home, every sock, every spoon, every fork, every uh, every little doodad, because that's four thousand in Mama's house. Amen. <laughs> Mama's gonna get me. She's gonna whip me out of church tonight. Amen. Uh, but listen, if you add up every little item in your house, what do you? How many items do you think you'd have in your house? <clears throat> Rick, quick guess. How many? Ten thousand. How many of y'all think he's way over? <laughs> he is way under. <laughs> The average household has over 30,000 items in their house. 30, the average household has over 30,000 items in their home. Now, you can go count yours if you want to. I ain't going to count mine because I'm the one that's got 45,000 in there. I can tell you that right now. Amen. I, I, can, I can go through that and start counting. Let me ask you this. <laughs> How much of that do you get to enjoy? <laughs> How many of y'all that's got 38 shirts in the closet and you wear the same three all the time? Why don't we just give the rest of them away? What is wrong with that? I've, I've, been, I've been telling Jane for five years. Five years, Brother Kidman. I've got to go clean my closet out. Matter of fact, we're riding in the road today, and Jane, this this old jacket, I don't know how old this thing is, but it's got little, you women would, I, I wouldn't think nothing about it. It's got little scrubby things all over, little tags all over. 
I don't, I don't use nothing for it. I just wear it. <laughs> we were riding that road day. James rubbed me in arms. She said, "We need a, I need to go get you some, some new jacket. She said, feel of that right now. I don't ever think nothing about it. I know it. And she said, I need to go get some new jackets. I said, where are you going to put them? I literally don't have a space in my closet to put another jacket. Amen. What do you say, preacher? All of us need to do, get some things in order. Amen. It was do us good to collectively go through our homes from time to time, start cleaning up some stuff, put some things in order, sell it. If nothing else, give the money to charity to do something with it. Why don't we get rid of it? We're attached to it. I've already, <laughs> Miss Kathy, I've already been through that closet numerous times. There's a thousand shirts and pants hanging in there. I know it is. And I begin to look and think, one of these days, Brandon, I'm going to clean it up. And then think, well, I might wear that one day. Well, I ain't worn it in seven years. I hadn't. I, I promise you the stuff in that closet ain't been touched in ten years. Amen? I know it. And that would be a good thing. God would add some things we didn't even know we had. Listen. God can't bless you with anything new to go in the closet because you got too much in there now. Amen. Boy, I'd sure like to have a new coat for what? You ain't got nowhere to put it. Amen. We got to put some things in order from time to time. And in our spiritual life, listen to me, in our spiritual life and in our material life, there's some things that you and I need to get rid of so that God can add some things to our life. We have so many things that we are attached to that we cannot get rid of that God has no room at all to add to our life. None whatsoever. But he says, but I got to thinking about this thing when I asked that question, Lord, what things? What things? And God, boy, I, he took my mind. You know how I am. I get out in left field sometimes start thinking about some, some good things God would add to my life if I would just get rid of some things in my life, if I'd let God move somehow. God wants to bless us. He wants to add some things to our life. How many of us, how many of us think that a lot of times, I've got to narrow this down, it's 806 already, I'm already past my time tonight. Uh, we have to put some things in order. How many of you have heard the, heard the old saying, Money is the problem. I've heard that many, many times. Not money's not the problem. It's the love of money. I know some people with some money that don't love money. I know them personally. They're some of the greatest givers that I know of. They love giving. They've been blessed by God. Amen. And you know what they're doing a lot of times? <laughs> Boy, this is good. <laughs> Brother Jason, they're just pushing some stuff out so God can put some stuff back in. God's blessed them so much because they just keep pouring out and God just keep pouring in. God said, seek ye first the kingdom of God. If we seek God first, listen, if we seek God first, we're going to pour out. And God says, because you're pouring out, I'm going to pour in. Amen. And listen, he said, I'll open the windows of heaven, pour you out a blessing you'll not be received. God's pouring in quick and we can pour out. And God's still trying to pour in right now. Amen. I, I, I'm telling you, the cup's running over. And, and, and God, God right now, still, he's still trying to pour into us right now. He's trying to pour. It, God's trying to pour into us in every way that I can think of tonight, whether it be spiritually, mentally, emotionally, financially, whatever it is. Listen, God has opened the windows of heaven for us. There, there's, there's a blessing now waiting to come. But you and I have to learn to get some things in order and put some things out. So God can put some things in. God desires things in our life. He said, if you'll seek me, I will add some things to your life. One writer said this right here. I've never had this problem. He said, a man who has enough money to live in a comfortable home but lives in a shack while the family does without is not a conservative man. He's a greedy man. Amen? Now, I think we ought to live. How many of y'all, how many of y'all think for tonight that you had a dependable vehicle to drive?
the church. If anybody's got the extra one, Miss Candace needs one. <laughs> <laughs> we were just talking about that before church. I just thought about you, girl. I'm trying to help you. Amen. You better say amen and get on board with me. Amen. <laughs> amen. <laughs> this, uh, some of us got two or three dependable vehicles sitting around in our yard. I thank God for that. Amen. I, I'm, I'm, I ain't so uh, broken down tonight. Of, well, well, I'm just going to be poor, and I'm, I'm going to drive the roughest old thing I got, and I'm going to try to uh, get it down like I was riding a horse. But no, I'm glad I had something good to drive to church, church night, and it's got a heat on it when I leave. I thank God for that. It's not the money that's the problem. It's the love of that money. But I find that if we will pour it out, listen, God says, I'm going to add some things to your life. God will just pour it back in. And God's promise is in the Word of God, and i got to quit. There's so many things I want to tell you about this tonight. And, and all those things, I, I know we're, gonna, we're just going to run way too late. But listen, God wants to bless you. It's Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving, listen, is giving thanks. It's giving thanks. And we ought to give thanks to God and give what God's asked us to give, do what God's asked us to do. Get some things in order. Let God take some things out. So God can put some things in. I believe that if we go out of here tonight, we go home, and, and listen, we ain't even got to talk about the material things tonight. There's, there's so much of that there, son. Unreal. Don't go home and try to clean your closets out before Thanksgiving because I ain't doing that. Matter of fact, I've already told Jane, why don't you just clean it out while I'm gone? I could walk back in the house and be completely clean, and I'd be happy. It wouldn't, be, it wouldn't bother me at all. I, then I'd say, well, go give me some new ones. It'd be all right. I'll be good with that. It would not bother me at all. But, Brother Gene, if I walk in and sit, I'm like, Brother Gene, Miss Kathy gave me that shirt. Amen. Or some young kid in our, in our youth class from 27 years ago <laughs> gave me that tie. I got 400 of them hanging in there. Quick story. Quick story, and I'll close. Years ago, some of you heard this story. Years ago, I was in Dominican Republic, and um, one, of our, one of our young boys, one of our um, youth in the church uh, at that time, not in this church, it's in our home church, had uh, bought me a brand new tie, a brand new tie, and it had amazing grace on it. I'd never had one like it, and he bought me that tie, and uh, I forget whether it was, uh, maybe been my birthday, I, I don't know what it was, it wasn't a pastor or anything, but... And so I was going to the Dominican Republic not long after that. And so I took that tie with me. And while I was going down there, because I was going to wear that tie while I was down at the church and going into church. And, and I walked into church down there that, that uh, Sunday, and I had that tie on. And uh, there was a little preacher boy in that church named Santo. Brother Cliff, you remember Santo? Brother Cliff remembers him. Michael remembers him. And Santo, he could speak just enough broken English where we could kind of communicate and Santo comes over there to me, and he, he grabs that tie, and he said, I like it. I like it. I like it tie. And have you ever had God to just speak to you you thought it was audibly? And God said, give it to him. I'm like, no, Lord. <laughs> Lord, one of the little, little boys at church just gave me this three weeks ago. It means the world to him. God said it means a whole lot more to this boy right here because he probably don't have a tie. And I'm like, Lord, I can't give him this tie. I can't go home with that. If I never wear it in church, his parents will get married and mad leave church because I never wear the kids. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I left church that day. Boy, God just burdened my heart. And so when I went back to church Sunday night, guess what I did? I carried that tie and I gave it to him. It lit that boy up. I mean, it lit him up. He was the happiest thing in the world. I gave him that tie, and, and so we were there through the week, and so he came to church on Thursday night, and guess what he brought me? He brought me one of his ties. He had an old tie there. That thing was dirty. I mean, it was dirty. You got to know where I'm at. We're in third world country, amen? And it was dirty, but I acted like it was the best thing in the world. I still have that tie right today. Matter of fact, you wouldn't know which one it is, but I still wear that tie right today. Jane, I bought it home. Jane cleaned it and got it cleaned. It's cut off on one end of it right there. But every now and then, 
she'll pull that thing out. She said, I just want to wear that in memory of Santo today. Amen. God wants us to put some things out so God can put some things in. And listen, as I said earlier, I'm happy about the things God took out of my life. Matter of fact, I'd be happy if I went home tomorrow and my closet was clean that that was out of my life. <laughs> I didn't have to worry about it. Not that I'm lazy. I just don't want to deal with it. You know why I don't want to deal with it? Because I'm attached to it. Jane could go there and just take it and throw it all away. I'm like, let her go. Let her rip, baby. She's like, no, I want you to go through it. That's what you don't want me to do. Because I end up throwing three shirts away out of 800. Why? Be, we get attached to it. Amen. We're attached to so many things in this life that God, there's no room for God to just pour into us. He said, I want to add some things. I may go back and finish this one of these what things. I want to get into this what things. Lord, what things are you talking about? Let's all stand up here tonight. We love you. The Lord, it's 815. I haven't gone over 15 minutes tonight. Sorry about that. But I love